This session is about design of finite automata in a more easier, clear, and a trusting way. So, this uh, session I am going to start with an understanding that you have a better idea about the finite automata. If not, just go back to session 3 and then get a complete picture of what finite automata refers to. Just for a quick recap, finite automata is represented as a 5 tuple Q sigma, delta Q naught and F, where Q represents the set of states. Sigma represents the finite set of non-empty symbols that are permitted in the language. One special state from Q will be designated as a start state and that's what Q naught means. And there will be a set of final states which represents the end point of a transition. So again, that is also a subset from the set of final states Q. And the transition from one state to another state on a particular input symbol is being represented using the transition function, which is delta. So this delta formally, it is represented using this Q into sigma, that is Q cross sigma gives Q, where from a state when we apply an input symbol, where it goes is what is given. With this basic understanding about the finite automata, let's move on for design. So the first question which I'm going to consider is design a finite automata that accepts strings over A comma B that starts with A. So first we have to find out what is sigma. Sigma is nothing but the input symbols that are permitted on a particular language. Here it is clearly given in the question. So having found that, you have to first define the language, right? So what is the language? Just try to find the list of all words that are part of the language that should be designed. Right? So now, what is the criteria given? Design a finite automata that starts with AB. So start with the minimal length string. AB is what is mandated. So since it should be starting with AB, AB is the minimal length string. So the second string, see this is the only string of length 2. That's what I mean by minimal length string. If you go to string of length 3, since AB should be my starting uh, prefix, after that one symbol can be there okay, to make it a string of length 3. So what are the different possibilities? Since we do have two input symbols, ABA can be one string and ABB can be another string. So what we do, did, so in order to make, uh, make up the set 2 length, 10th string into 3 length string, you have the flexibility to attach either A or B. Then again, I am going to retime AB as my actual string. Now, what are the, how to make it into a length of, uh, string of length 4, right? So, two strings you can add. So, with two input symbols, how many different possibilities? There are four, right? AA can be there, AB, AB can be there, then AB, BA can be there. So, these two are the combinations we are writing and then AB, BB and it moves on okay having done these two then you have to go for design of finite automata this we will discuss in detail and then having designed this finite automata you have to go for testing this is more important right testing should be done in two phases you have to take right strings those strings that are that should be accepted by this language and check whether from the string Q0, are you able to reach F by reading the strings, right? So these are what we call as W. Then you take some wrong strings. What do we call as wrong string? Let me indicate with capital W. So this is just an indication for me, that's all, but it's not standard convention, which should not be accepted by the language already designed. Okay. So you keep, so I mean to say that, Q0 on the application of W should not reach final state. The final state should not be reached. Either it should stay in intermediate state or it should stay in dead state. <coughs> Always try to design a finite automata starting with the min string of minimal length. Okay, So if you have string of minimal length, which is of length 2, obviously we will have three states. Okay, 90% of the time this will go right. Okay, but this is not a standard rule. This I am telling you from my own experience. If well, there is only one string of length 2, which is of minimal length here, then if it has two symbols, then you will have three states. The automata must accept this string. So you will get a transition or finite automata of this kind, right? From the start state Q0, on the application of first input symbol, it will move on to an intermediate state Q1. 
and when the second input symbol is being applied, you can move on to intermediate uh, another intermediate, uh, final state which is Q2, right? Now, this is the finite automata that will accept this string. Now, how to make it to accept the next strings? Already we know that AB is part of that. What is actually happening here? After AB, okay, there is a possibility to have A and B any number of times. There is no restriction on that. Okay? So, our requirement is that all the strings must start with A followed by B. So, hereafter, whatever be the symbol that comes, either A or B, no matter. So, you can stay in the final state itself. Hope you can understand. So, the concept is that all strings should start with A followed by B, which actually convinces our requirement, which is AB. And finally, after that, you can have any number of A's and B's that is coming on our input string. Right? So, this is actually a diagram or a finite automata that accepts your this language. Okay. So, how to test this now? You take some strings that are part of this. Already we have written, we will take two strings, A, B, A. Then we'll take one more of A, B, A, B. Okay? And check whether it is accepted or not. If you take the first string from Q0, when you apply A, it takes you to Q1. From Q1, when you apply B, it takes you to Q2. Then from here, if you apply again A, again you stay back in Q2, which is a final string. So this word is accepted. Now coming to the next word, from Q0 on A, you go to Q1. From Q1 on B, you go to Q2. Then Q1. Q2 on A, you stay in Q2, and then on B, you stay in Q2. Right. No issues, the word is accepted. Now, let us take one word that should not be part of this. Okay. For example, A, A, B. Why is it not accepted? Because it's not starting with A, B, rather it starts with A, U. So now, on from Q0, when you apply A, then you will go to Q1. From where, when you apply A, there is no destination. Right? So, that's what is the, you will end up with the intermediate state and hence the word will not be accepted by this automata. Right? But is it complete? No. Okay. Why? Because if you leave the system into an unknown state while it is working, it doesn't know how to react okay? and it will get into a confused state. In which case, it's the duty of an engineer to completely instruct the system of how it has to react when an inappropriate item comes onto your input. Most of the time, when right click is not permitted, if you do, it is giving you an error message stating that right click is not permitted. Okay, that's what is the reaction you have to give. So from Q0, the only accepted string is A. Let's assume A to be the left click, right? So it's only accepted string is A. Now, when a B comes on the input, okay, what should I do? I have to go to a dead state, a special state we call it as dead state. So you can assume it to be an error. Okay? Now that from Q, Q1, already we know what to be done on input symbol B, but we don't know what to happen when we do have a A. For example, that's the case here. right? When I see one A on my input, I have moved on here. When the second A comes, it means that the string should not be accepted and hence you should take the system to the dead state again. Okay? You look into the dead state, it is a special state wherein you will have only inward transitions, not outgoing edge. So when it, when any uh, system transits, tra that is, makes a transition to this state, it will end up here itself. Now the diagram is complete. How do I know? From every state, on the application of all the input symbols, I know what the system has to do. From Q0, you have a transition on A and on B. From Q1, you know, on transition A and B. From Q2, you know, the transition on A and B. That's it. Very simple and interesting design of finite automata. Let me convert this into a transition table also. Okay, so you have how many states? Q0, Q1, and then Q2. Okay, so Q0 is supposed to be the start state. Q2 is supposed to be the final state. You have two input symbols A and B. What is that input symbol? From Q0 on A, you can move on to Q1. Q0 on B, you move on to dead state. Q1 on A, again it is dead state. This is to Q2 and this is to Q2 and Q2. That's all. We have drawn the transition table also. Come, let's go for the design of second problem. The concept is, or the question is, design a finite automata that accepts strings over AB. That ends with AB. 
Okay, so the previous problem is it starts with AB. Here it ends with AB. Hope all of you can better move with that very quickly. So here again, sigma is A comma B, which is given here itself. What is L? L is nothing but the set of all strings that are accepted by this. So since all the strings should end with AB, I'll have AB as my first string. And the ending criteria is given, so you have the flexibility to add the prefix to it. Okay. So there are two input symbols, so AAB and BAB can be part of it. Then again, if you go for link strings of length uh, two, again two, uh, two that is uh, sim two symbols can be added as a prefix here. So it could be AA and then AB and so on. Just you follow. Try to design a finite automata for this minimal length string. So you will have Q0, then you will have Q1, then you will have Q2. Why I am writing drawing three states? Because the minimal length string is of length 2, right? Now the same transition, this is A and this is B, okay? Now that you have to make all the adjustments on this automata to make it accepted. This AB is mandatory. Before this, you can have the flexibility to have A or B, okay? So suppose that if I draw A comma B here, Yes, it will do accept the corresponding criteria. All the words of this language can be accepted. Okay? But the only problem is we do have a transition here on A and here on A also. That is from Q0. When you apply A, there are two options. Either you can stick on to A, Q0 and you, or you can move on to Q1. That's your uh, So again, it is a finite automata which we call as non-deterministic. In the next session, we'll discuss in detail about non-determinism. When Q0, when I when I apply A as my input symbol, again, if I move to Q1, so what each and every state represents that we need to understand first. Q0 represents we are expecting AB, right? Q1 represents the fact that we are expecting only B. But Q2 represents the fact that you have seen AB on the input and nothing is what is expected on the pipeline. When you look at the strings, you have the characteristic of the state into mind. Then it will be much more clear. See, when I see an A here, what is what do I expect next? It is just a B. Right? So that's what this means. When I see a A here, what do I expect next? B. Any number of A's that come on the pipeline is not a matter for me. So what can I do? When I see one A, when I reach Q1, any number of A's that comes on the input string, I don't have an issue. I can just stay on the state itself because 1A, 2As, 3As, 4As, it's all ending up with A's. So where we are in need of only B after that. Okay. So now if you have B here, see, okay, we have run the transition on A from Q0. Where do I stay when I have a B? So the next string you could take. Okay. So we do expect maybe. So when a B comes, I guess I can stand here itself, right? So if you stay back here itself, what does it mean? On any number of Bs, you can stay here. Only you can make a transition when you have a, when you see a A on the input, right? Now, this is over from Q0. We know where to move on the application of input symbol A and B from Q1. Again, we know from Q2, right? Because we the constraint is that all strings should end up with A, B. While reaching the final state, if any other AB comes in and Q2 is being reached, let's say you have seen AB on your input. So now that if you see an A again on the input, where do I move? I have seen AB on my input. So I have moved myself from Q0, gone through Q1 and then reached Q2. Right. Now I am in Q2. Again, I am looking at A. So what should I expect next? I should expect a B to make the complete. Okay, so which state represents the fact that I am expecting another B? It is Q1. So what to do? When I see an A on my input, I have to make a transition back to Q1 from where the system should again expect a B. Okay, that's the case. Now, from Q2, if you see a B, okay, so what is the sample example here? A, B is what I have seen, which makes me to move from Q0 through Q1 to Q2, now that I am seeing B as my input, right? So if B is that, what should I expect next to make it part of the string? Yes, it is AB. Because ABB, if it comes, again AB should be there to make ABB, 
AB as part of the language, right? So, what is my expectation? It is again AB. Which states contribute to that? So, this is expecting AB. This is expecting B. So, what should I move? I have to move myself from Q2 to Q0 on the transition on B. Okay. From where again I should expect AB as my input. Right. So, that's what is the design of finite automata when you have strings that insert with AB. I hope you all have a little bit idea on the design of finite automata through writing this language. So, let us continue with some more examples in my next session. Thank you, viewers.